This mini tutorial is about free fall. Free fall is a word that uh, has a very specific definition in physics that's a little bit different than what it sounds like it would be uh, if you're going by the ordinary language definition of free fall. So first, uh, we need to define what free fall is. Okay, free fall to a physicist is uh, any time you have an object uh, that is acting only under the influence of gravity. So this is an object that's moving uh, near the Earth's surface. only under the influence of gravity. What that means, in particular, if it's only influenced by gravity, uh, that means, for example, that uh, there's no air resistance acting on the object. Uh, the object doesn't have any engines or motors, so no propulsion of any kind. Okay. <clears throat> but uh, notice uh, one thing that it doesn't necessarily mean. It says free fall is the word, but the definition doesn't have anything in there about actually falling. Okay, so falling is not required in order for an object to be in free fall, even though that sounds kind of strange. Okay, so any object that's moving near the Earth's surface only under the influence of gravity is in free fall. So uh, if we have a rock that's falling, uh, that's in free fall as long as air resistance isn't affecting it. But, strangely enough, if I toss the rock up, after it leaves my hand, no air resistance is acting on the rock, and uh, the rock doesn't have any propulsion after it leaves my hand, so the rock on its way up is actually also moving in free fall according to the physicist's definition of free fall. All right, and even a rock that is flying through the air like this, uh, as long as it's not being affected very much by air resistance or at all by air resistance, that rock is also in what we would call free fall by the official definition of free fall. Okay, now uh, this term, no air resistance, uh, is important uh, because obviously if, if there is air resistance, then an object would not be in free fall. But it turns out that dealing with air resistance is quite complicated mathematically. Uh, and it's also true that in order to understand motion with air resistance, you have to understand motion without air resistance. So for the purposes of this course, unless you're told otherwise, you can assume that air resistance is not present in the problem. Okay, so keep that in mind. We're going to ignore air resistance unless you're explicitly told otherwise. And that goes not just for this tutorial, but this mini tutorial, but any of the other ones that are up, uh, the textbook problems, the web assigned problems, and so forth. You should assume that air resistance is not important unless you're told otherwise. Okay, now let's uh, give you a little mini quiz to see uh, if you understand it, uh, actually, no, I've gotten ahead of myself. It's not time for the mini quiz yet. Uh, I'm going to clear the slide and continue the discussion of free fall. Okay, well, the reason that we're discussing free fall right now uh, at this particular point in our study of motion is we just learned about the kinematic equations 
uh, equations that you can use to solve problems when the acceleration is constant? Well, it turns out that free fall is an example of a situation where the acceleration of an object is constant. Okay, any object in free fall So if it's moving near the Earth's surface, uh, in the absence of air resistance or any kind of influence other than gravity, uh, accelerates at the same rate. And that rate is 9.8 meters per second squared. Uh, since the acceleration is constant in free fall, that means we can use the kinematic equations uh, in order to study objects that are in free fall. Now, uh, this is a little bit counterintuitive at, at first, right? If, if uh, any object in free fall accelerates at uh, 9.8 meters per second squared, then that means uh, if I drop say, a tennis ball that only weighs, say, 100 grams or so, it's going to accelerate at 9.8 meters per second squared. But, you, uh, weighs, say, 100 grams, but I can also drop a bowling ball, which weighs 10 kilograms, that's 100 times, what the tennis ball weighs, but it also accelerates at 9.8 meters per second squared. Uh, and in fact, even if we if we could drop a feather in the absence of air resistance, it too would fall at the same rate of 9.8 meters per second squared. So this was discovered by Galileo that all objects fall at the same rate. And it is a little bit counterintuitive, but you can prove it experimentally. And in fact, Galileo did that. He dropped a heavy ball and a light ball, and he showed that uh, they fell at the same rate, and that they were accelerated uh, at 9.8 meters per second squared. OK, now it's time for the mini quiz. So I'm going to clear the screen and give you a little quiz for, uh, that you can take yourself. Okay, now let's say I'm going to toss a ball upward. I'm going to toss it straight up so that it goes up. It reaches some highest point right here. And then it falls back down. So let's call point A on the way up. Point B is its highest point. And point C is on the way down. And the question is, at which point is the acceleration of this ball the greatest? So take a moment to think about that. Pause the recording if you want to. But uh, decide what you think the correct answer is, and then continue the recording and see if you're correct. All right, well, uh, it turns out that the acceleration is the same at all three points. The acceleration is 9 0.8 meters per second squared for all three because uh, this rock is in free fall the whole time. It's being acted on only under the influence of gravity at both at points A, B, and C. And we just learned that the acceleration for an object in free fall is 9.8 meters per second squared. 
That means that the acceleration is the same at all three points. Now, if you missed it, you were probably thinking about the speed, at which point is the speed the greatest. That is a different question. Acceleration and speed are not the same thing. Remember, acceleration is change in velocity or change in speed. So uh, while the speed is definitely lowest at point B and higher at points A and C, the acceleration for the rock is the same all three times, 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay, that uh, ends this mini tutorial on free fall. You can look, watch the next mini tutorial if you would like to see how we can use uh, the kinematic equations to solve problems in free fall.